In Lindau on Lake Constance, Frank Obrist is involved with green future technology. Obrist has been in the business for a long time, 39 years. He started here at the Felix Wankel Institute and has returned here with his technology company, Obrist Group. From his point of view, e-technology is far from being the end of drive technology. Undisputedly, pure electrification has great advantages, but of course it also needs many resources and is more expensive. If the average citizen in the world only has well under 20,000 euros at hand, then we as an industry or technician must provide technology that can also be paid for by the world's population. Obrist would like to offer a possible solution for this global task with the Hyper Hybrid. A serial hybrid electric vehicle that should make the pure electric motor compared to say, the Tesla, a lot more efficient. Distances of 1,000 kilometers, lower overall operating costs, and a smaller CO2 footprint. Prototypes with the drive concept are already on the road. Obrist has converted Tesla vehicles for this purpose. The pure electric drive was replaced by the essential components of a serial hybrid system. A two-cylinder engine as a generator, a significantly smaller battery, and the actual electric drive. Planet Zukunft takes a closer look at the individual components of the Oberst Hyper-Hybrid drive technology. Here in the back we see a normal electric car. We have wheels, an electric motor with a transmission on it, and with a battery. The battery in a series production Tesla weighs around 700 kilograms. The Obrist battery is much lighter. It weighs 110 kilograms and has a capacity of 17.3 kilowatt hours. Now you're probably asking yourself, how do we create these giant ranges when there is only a small battery? To supplement that, we've actually added a generator, which is a two-cylinder combustion engine that runs on gasoline and methanol. The special thing about this engine is that it is stationary. That means we always have an open throttle, which greatly increases efficiency. It's a very simple engine, which means there are no components in it like variable valve timing that add complexity. That means means it's a very low-cost engine. The actual drive on the rear axle is provided by an electric motor with a reduced output of 120 kilowatts less compared to the standard Tesla. Enough theory, time to take a look at the prototype in operation installed in a Tesla Model Y. With a serial hybrid that already exists, what makes this engine so special? Under 65 kilometers per hour, the car drives completely electrically. Above 65, the engine kicks in. It only has one task, to produce electricity as efficiently as possible. How does the car perform in operation? With a WLTP standard consumption of 3.3 liters of methanol, or 2 liters of gasoline, distances of more than 1,000 kilometers should become the norm. Our control strategy is actually currently designed in such a way that the engine only switches on at or below an 80% charge level and from 65 kilometers per hour. This means that we drive purely electrically in urban areas and everything above that is driven by the generator. So based on the speed driven and the energy requirements of the electric motor, the generator charges the battery partially or completely with its 45 kilowatts of power. The generator allows Obris to keep the battery's charge level within a defined range. This should make 6,000 charging cycles possible. And the engineers from Lake Constance are also innovative when it comes to thermal management. Thanks to a vacuum fixing technology called plating, the battery's insulation is maximized and thermal aging is minimized. In addition to the electric charging option, the Obris prototype also has a filler neck for the so-called liquid battery. A 40-liter methanol tank, but the battery generator can also be operated with gasoline. 
Compared with the series production Tesla, the Obrist Hyper Hybrid is 250 kilograms lighter. It's said to have twice the range and is significantly cheaper. Best of all, with a series production of some 250,000 vehicles, Obris calculates a selling price of just 21,000 euros. We have already issued licenses, that is for the hyper-hybrid, but we assume that there should be series production of this drive technology within the next three to four years. Climate neutral driving for Frank Obrist, just the first step. Here at the Obrist Tech Center, they are already planning the synthetic fuel of the future with a negative CO2 footprint. The realization that we, as humanity, need a global energy source in the future that is also responsible for a CO2 negative overall balance, that was the core of my efforts. The idea, in the sun belt of the Earth, for example in Australia or Namibia, large solar systems should provide cheap energy at a price of less than one cent per kilowatt hour. After the desalination of seawater, hydrogen is to be separated from the oxygen by means of solar energy, by electrolysis, technologies that already exist. The so-called capturing and processing of CO2, also already tested, but currently not yet at the very high level in application, should be the second building block of the energy source of the future. Renewable methanol is produced from CO2 and hydrogen, the so-called A-fuel. Obris calls the principle the modern forest. Am Schluss in the end, we found that this system, which we are now describing, does nothing else. Like nature, it takes CO2 from the air, uses water, forms a carbon carrier like in the forest, releases the oxygen into the air, and instead of tree trunks, we just get our e-methanol. In addition to the e-methanol production, part of the solar energy is to be used to produce hydrogen on the one hand and carbon on the other, as, for instance, graphite with the same ingredients CO2 and hydrogen. The carbon then being sunk under the ground. Due to this carbon sink, Obris calculates a negative CO2 footprint of 24 grams per kilometer, driven for its A-fuel energy carrier. The fuel is the carrier of this renewable energy in liquid form, and that gives me the opportunity to roll out electrification globally. Liquid solar energy. Simply because of the extensive dimensions of the project, it is still a vision of the future. But they are working on it in the Obris Technology Forge at the Wankel Institute in Lindau. We know today we know today that in the Earth's sunbelt, world records are being written by cheap renewable energy. There, we can generate electricity under 1% per kilowatt hour. The point about efficiency is an interesting one, but if I only spend a tenth of what I spend on energy, and then I lose half, then I'm still a factor of five times better than in Germany. Energy from the Earth's sunbelt comes to us from Australia or Namibia, then on to Europe. 